me, teaching is always about personal interaction with students and uh, interacting um, in, a, in a lively manner with people as part of my everyday life, and this is just another dimension to it. I don't, I don't look upon teaching at all as uh, the dissemination of abstract information or simply transmitting materials. It emerges out of conversation, and I'm a conversational person. What I do is perhaps a little different from what some other people do, since I teach world religions, which, by the way, is probably not a perfect designation because I do everything but Christianity, Judaism, and Native American, which are, of course, religions around the world. Um, but I do, for instance, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Chinese religions, Japanese religions, etc. For most of our students, uh, those are unfamiliar religions. So part of what I'm doing is to introducing them is to introduce them to things they don't know about and they'll lie outside of their worldview. At the same time, uh, I'm giving them a space to rethink some of their most basic beliefs, their most basic ideas. Most college students, 18 to 22 year, years of age, uh, it seems to, seems to me, even if they're coming out of a tradition, they're asking questions about it. Do I believe it anymore? Uh, does it make any sense? And it's helpful to give them another place to stand or to sit, where they can look at another tradition and see how they approach similar questions. And that might give them some leverage in thinking about their own, own views. A philosophy of teaching, um, well, I could go on forever about that. Uh, but yes, uh, basically to listen and to converse. I mean, the most important thing, if we're reading a text, listen to what the text says. Uh, some of my colleagues like to use a word uh, like interrogate. We interrogate a text. We interrogate an artifact. And perhaps, but, but I find that language sort of smacks of, of the KGB or the <laughs> Gestapo or something like that. You have to listen first. Hear what the other voices are saying. And then listen to what the students say when they say that. And then it play back and forth with them and you know, challenge them, sometimes let them challenge you. A formative moment for me in my first years of teaching was a student one afternoon just yelled at me in a seminar and said, you're wrong. And I thought about it and I realized he was right. I was. Um, that's in terms of a discussion class. For a lecture class, it's theater. True, you're transmitting information, but at the same time, you act out the traditions, you do funny voices, you get the students involved, um, you take all questions. Um, you challenge them. Many times students will anticipate the next step in a lecture because they see where this is going. Um, that in a few words, I suppose, is what my philosophy is. Two ways of talking about that. I think one is the immediate setting of the classroom, uh, the discussion room or the lecture room. You look at their faces. Um, if you see their following, if you see their eyes light up, or if you see puzzlement. Sometimes we don't make enough room for a puzzle. I think students should always understand, always be happy. You know, they should be a little unhappy sometimes, a little discombobulated. If I'm seeing that occurring, then something is working. Now, I can stand by their side and encourage them and say, it's all right, your world's going to fall apart. Uh, that's easier to do in a seminar, of course, because they're on the other side uh, of the room. Um, but even in a lecture, I watch faces as we're running around the room. If I, if I see a kid looking puzzled about something, I'll, I'll call on him and say, so, you know, James, what, what, what's that look mean? Um, there are days you don't know if it's going well. I've had days when I've come out of a class, uh, whether discussion or lecture, and I think it was terrible. And then two days later, a student will come up to me and say, Dr. Blix, that was one of the best classes I've ever been in before. And so there's a complete disconnect. I have no idea what's happening. There, of course, are the standard methods of assessment exams, papers, um, and that usually goes but it's an art, not a science. Um, I know there's a, a big push these days in the academy to um, do studies and surveys and to collect data. And, um, and then I will be told in a discussion, um, such, and such, such and such a study has shown. And to that my reaction is, well, no. Such and such a study does not show anything. Studies never show anything unless you mean they exhibit 
but they don't show in the sense of proving or demonstrating. Studies report. They say, with these students at this time, in this place, using these questions and this uh, instrument of research, this is what we found. Um, I, was, it's, I think it's in maybe in one of the AAR, uh, somewhere in the uh, program this time, there's a description of, a, of a, somebody saying, and I can show that this works, it has proven results. Well, no, they worked for this person. Um, so in that sense, it's not a science. You can take this stuff and use it by all means. It's, 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 it's uh, advisory rather than mandatory, if you will. But beyond that, you, you play it by ear. Um, you can keep track of what you do. You make note of assignments that didn't work, days that didn't work. Um, but I think of it more as an art. In the classroom, uh, the way I position myself is to do the best job I can giving a voice to the, the, the religion or the faith or the tradition that I'm teaching at the time. So if I'm teaching Islam, th this semester, for instance, I have a course called Islam and the Religions of India. The first half of the course is on Islam. Um, I try to present things from a Muslim point of view. Say, this is what Muslims say. Now, there are moments when I will, uh, I'm very careful to say, my point of view disagrees with that. For instance, uh, the difference between biblical and Quranic uh, views, say, of, of Abraham um, or, or Moses. But even then, it's always in a respectful kind of way. So I, I, again, we're told this is not possible, but I do try to keep my my personal views off to one side, but I don't try to hide them. I mean, they know I'm coming from somewhere. Say a day-to-day -day basis, a class comes alive, and the students are going at it, and there's this energy flying around the room. Uh, to me, that's a marvelous thing, and to watch their minds work, and you know, eyes light up, and insights happen, or puzzlement occurs, uh, the anti-insight, if you will. Uh, that, mean, that means I'm helping contribute to their lives. Um, and very often, years later, a student will come up to me and say, you may not remember this. And very often, these are like a, it's like a conversation we had in the hallway. And I don't remember. But a student will say, you made a comment to me that was really helpful. And I, I found that to be a life of, of service, and I thoroughly enjoyed it at every turn. Thank you.